Hey guys, what is up? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting adventure in Max MSP. Uh, this week, or really I should say this, I don't know, month or so, we dive even deeper into the world of JIT GL picks, and I show you how to do a cool shader based fisheye type um, effect. Uh, first, two announcements. One, this will be my last tutorial from Williamsburg for a while now. Very sad to go, but I'm going to head back to San Francisco for a little while, spend some time there. And uh, also, this coming Tuesday, so not today, but tomorrow, the 28th of February, if you're in town and you feel like getting yourself some learning, um, you should come down to Third Ward, the shared co-working space and creative whatever in East Williamsburg uh, at 7.30. I'm going to be leading a class on iPhone development. Um, and yeah, it's totally free, and if you feel like wasting a couple hours, it would be a great place to uh, to do that. So anyway, hopefully I'll see you there. Um, so let's get started. We have a lot to cover. Um, let's start by making, <laughs> let's start, because uh, this is a democracy, because you have some say in how this goes. Let's start by making a new patcher window and zooming in so your viewers at home can see it. Always be considerate to your viewers at home. That's my advice for you. Um, so I'm going to start by throwing up a bunch of boilerplate stuff. This is what you would need to do just in order to get um, JITGL picks up and to start working with it. And um, I wish I didn't, I think it's okay to go through this exercise because um, it's helpful, I think, for you to see what you have to set up and for me to practice it. So anyway, start by making a JITGL, uh, a P window, uh, load mess name Fred. Uh, for some reason, GL likes to have these P windows named. It helps them remember them, I think. I don't know. Um, and what we're going to be doing in this in this P window, why, of course, we're going to be JIT GL rendering into it. And I'm going to set the erase color. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, but we'll set it to black just because um, we're very dark people with a lot of inner turmoil. Um, so be uh, behind everything, uh, we'll, we will have a black color to indicate our black inner, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, so Q Metro 30, pretty standard stuff, a little toggle next to our Q Metro to turn it on and off, just the way Q Metro likes it. Now a trigger, bang, bang, erase, bang, bang, erase, the title of my new album. And the erase first erase this erases this GL render and this um, bang all the way here on the left is going to tell it to do its rendering. And in the middle, we have to tell we have to give GL render all the stuff it needs to actually do the render. So what it needs to do the render is um, this JIT uh, dot grab, which is just going to take input from my little onboard um, MacBook Pro camera because I am a MacBook Pro and JIT GL. Uh, video plane at um, transform reset two. That does, I, I don't have a clue what, but evidently it's critical. Um, I should have looked it up before the video. I apologize. And now, of course, JITGL um, picks, which is our shader program. And for the time being, it's going to be doing absolutely nothing. Uh, it's just going to pass the input matrix to the output matrix. Okay, now. Um, we need to be able to open and close, open and to close our camera. So we will hook those up, open the camera, my little green light goes on, send this bang into JITGL grab, and I'm turn on the Q-Metro, there's my face, my beautiful face with all of its kind of crude, horrendous features, and my need for a haircut, and my fantastic Williamsburg kitchen. So you're, you're welcome for this view into my inner, into my world. Uh, whether you, whether that's something you wanted or not. Um, okay, so let's see. What are we going to talk about now? All right, so that's the boilerplate stuff. We've officially accomplished nothing, but that's okay. The meat of what's going to happen now is here in JITGL picks. Now, before we go any further, um, let me just address the potential confusion that could surround... Um, answering what is, just what is a shader program anyway? And for me, it's always very helpful to think about it um, in terms of a question. So basically, um, what helps me anyway to get my head around what a shader program is and how these GPUs are working is basically a shader program is answering a question. And that question is, for each pixel on my screen, what should I draw there? How do I know what to draw there? And in the case of JITGL picks, what you're given to work with is an input matrix, which is just a, a, an image that's already drawn, and the coordinates of each point. And so you're supposed to say, oh, okay. Um, well, basically, how you use that to figure out what to draw is your shader program. So if your shader program says, oh, I'm at 0, 0, and the input matrix is brown, so go ahead and draw brown there. That's as simple as it gets. 
Um, so in the context of a fisheye, how does a fisheye filter work, a fisheye lens? Well, here's a basic kind of look into how it works. Um, right here, what you're looking at is how a fisheye shader program would answer the question, what do I draw at a given pixel? The black circle represents the given pixel, and the red circle represents the sample pixel. In other words, when you go to draw um, a given pixel in your output matrix, a fisheye shader program will look to another pixel to determine how to draw it. The black dot represents the pixel that I want to draw, and the red dot is the pixel that I'm sampling in order to draw it. So basically, as you can see, all that the fisheye shader program will do is take the point that you're given and sort of draw that point back towards the center to find a sample point. And then it grabs that point and pulls it back out to draw the actual point in the output matrix. And it's that pulling back out that gives your fisheye lens that kind of bloated, distorted effect. And that's what we're going to reproduce here inside our shader program. So let's get started. Um, we're going to need a cell and a dim. What comes out of ha uh, and a dim? Two different, why I found that so amusing. Two different things, cell and dim. Um, cell gives you the coordinates of the point that you're trying to draw, anywhere from 0, 0 to 640, 480, which is the dimensions of our matrix. And dim gives you those dimensions. No matter what, it gives you 640, 480. I should mention that what comes out of the cell is actually a list, two, uh, two numbers. And it's same for dim here. So what we want to do, first thing we want to do is scale the values coming out of cell to be um, between, instead of being between 0 and the dimension, to be between minus 1 and 1. Or in the case of the x-coordinate, to be between something a little bit less than minus 1 and a little bit more than plus 1, because uh, we actually want to scale, because our matrix is not, um, the, it's not a square, it's a rectangle, but we want our fisheye lens to be a circle. So we're going to scale by the y dimension only so that our, our fisheye lens is going to be the size of the height of our window. Um, and so it'll be a, a little bit clipped in the x direction. Um, so anyway, we multiply the, to achieve that, we multiply dim by 0 0.5 and subtract um, cell from this half dim. And if you're wondering what the hell's going on, for me, it always helps just to think, take a step back and think, okay, what's coming in here? What's coming out? What's coming in is the number between um, 0 and 640. What's coming in here is always 320. So what comes out here is a number between minus 320 and 320. Um, and now we're going to throw up a swizz y, and swizz, you're saying, what is this swizz? Well, swizz, as the name may suggest, is a very cool Fonzie-esque object that says, in the case of swizz y, it says, well, listen, Dim, I know you're giving me an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, but frankly, I don't really care. I just want the y. So your x-coordinate, I just, I don't give a shit. Um, that was dumb. That was a dumb explanation. I apologize. Anyway, swizz just gives you certain coordinates, uh, certain, rather, points rather than others. Um, from your input vector. So now we're dividing what's come out of here by the y coordinate, and what comes out of here is now a number scaled to be between minus one and one. Um, we're going to take the length, and so we had the x and y coordinate uh, between negative one and one, and we're taking the length of those, so what comes out of here is just a single number that is the length of that vector. So it'll be the same for, say, a unit circle around the origin. Um, and then we're going to subtract one from that, or rather that number from one. So basically we're going to have a number that's one close to the origin and then closer to zero the further you go out. We're going to clip that to be in the range of zero to one. Wonderful. And uh, cool, we're almost, we're actually already almost there, if you can believe it. So now what we want to do is take that number and um, use it to generate, uh, to, to give in a point um, somewhere in this matrix, compute a point that's closer to the center. So we're taking a point, computing a point closer to the center, and using that as our sample. So we're going to use a snorm object. Snorm just gives us a um, signed norm, a number between minus one and one. Oh, thank you, helpful pop-up hint for telling me what I already knew. Um, so we're going to multiply the value coming out of here, this distance. Remember, this is a number that's one close to the origin and zero further away. So the effect is, in other words, more pronounced the closer you are to the center. We're multiplying this signed norm um, by that, uh, the degree of our effect, which is coming out of here, and then subtracting that uh, the signed norm from this value. So in other words, the snorm is going to be larger and larger and larger the further you go away from the center, and here we're subtracting something, so that's pulling it back towards the center. Um, and then after that, you just need to make sure that this number still makes sense. So you do scale minus one um, 
one, zero, one, because sample is expecting a number between zero and one, and then you clip, clip to be between zero and one, because you want to be absolutely sure that that number is between zero and one. And finally, you throw in a sample object, and sample takes a um, input matrix in its left inlet and a um, sample point in its uh, right inlet, and you throw that here, and boom, you have a wonderful fisheye effect. And there is my bloated, I, 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 there, there's my bloated bizarre fisheye face. Um, so yeah, we did it. We did a fisheye, and it took all of however long it took. Um, okay. So we've done that, let's add a couple parameters so we can play around. Um, one place we might want to have a free parameter is here. We might want to say increase, be able to increase or decrease how pronounced our effect is. And for that we're going to declare a new param, ram, and call it amp. And then multiply by amp, throw that over here. And now back in our main, uh, let's make this one by default. And now back in our main patch we can um, Throw in a message box that's amp1 and a float box connected to that message box. And now we can slide up and down the amplitude all the ding dong day and look at the cool effects we can get. Awesome, wonderful. Okay, one more free param parameter that might be fun to control is here coming out of clip. Um, we may want to um, exponentiate this value between 0 and 1. And the reason that we do that is because um, uh, sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. The reason that we might want to do that is because that will allow us to have some control over the curvature of our effect. Um, what I mean by that, I'll show you in this in another patch. Um, here's an example of what an exponent looks like for values between 0 and 1. As you can see, as you decrease the exponent, you sort of um, increase the effect closer to the origin, and as you increase the exponent, you increase the value further away from the origin. So you just sort of have, add a nice contour or shape to your fisheye lens. Um, so we need to make a new parameter, we're going to call it expo, and it's going to be by default 1. And now back here we're just going to take this uh, amp thing, duplicate it, but call this one expo. Expo, no, not exporters, just expo, jeez. Um, send that into here. And now if I set the amplitude to 1 and the exponent to be, you can see that as I increase this exponent, it sort of um, lessens the effect near the origin, which is interesting. So yeah, it kind of makes it into a little point. And as I, oh my gosh, as I decrease this and make it a value between 0 and 1, it really exaggerates the effect, especially close to the origin. So anyway, there you go. Um, that's actually basically it. That's the entirety of uh, the cool stuff that you can do for this fisheye filter. So I'll say with my weird distorted face, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was informative and useful. It certainly was for me. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at Third Ward, 7.30, for a cool class in iPhone development. It's going to be a blast. Or rather, iPhone game development, I should say. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And now one cool thing, a little PS, some extra credit that I found playing around with this I thought was really cool. Jump back over here to the shader, take this scale and clip, and replace that with plus one divided by two and mod one. And all we're doing here is taking the value that comes out and uh, this, with the same basic idea in mind, we want to take values that are going to be between minus 1 and 1 and scale them to be between 0 and 1. But now we're adding wrap around. So as you move further and further out this way, instead of just clipping to be 1, it's going to wrap around. And so we'll have this cool pattern as we move these, our amplitude and um, exponent sort of extreme. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So as your exponent and amplitude get sort of extreme, um, you see these really cool effects start to, yeah, <laughs> these really weird cool effects start to um, play out. So uh, yeah, have fun with that. Always, if you mess up and don't do things the way you expect, you should always save it because, wow, that's some weird shit. <laughs> yes, what is even happening? Oh my god. All right, cool. Thanks for watching, guys, once again. Hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next video.